It's called Ancient Apocalypse. If no one knows who Graham Hancock is or Randall Carlson, this has to do with them. More Graham Hancock. So this was an interesting show to begin with. The whole reason I found out about it was listening to the uh, Joe Rogan, and it I okay. So I've I've heard of Graham Hancock before. As I got into that podcast with them on, I remembered that I had listened to him on the podcast like two years ago, and. I already found his hypothesis very interesting. He's an archaeologist and a j- j- journalist and a writer. And it was very interesting, the stuff he was saying. Basically pointing towards the fact that there is a very high chance of a lost civilization that we don't know about that was lost to history. And he explains why he explains uh what happened to them as best as he can and he explains his reasoning behind a lot of it he has several books i think one's called fingerprints of the gods another one's america before i think that's his most recent one i do want to read both of these books but his whole idea was that there was some advanced civilization uh, around the time of the ice age and before that we just didn't know about and to mainstream historians that would be a, a very ridiculous statement and then he kind of explains and slowly but surely he's been preaching this for y- this hypothesis for years and it isn't until i think basically 20 in the 2010s there was proof towards it, and it was called the Young Adrius Impact Theory, and that there is evidence to show geologically that about 12,500 years ago in geological samples, core samples, that there is a black mat, and it's known as an extinction uh, level in, in the soil. And if you look, it has nuclear glass. So where something got hot enough, the soil got hot enough to melt into glass on the surface. And the reason it's called nuclear glass is because the only times we have physically witnessed it was after nuclear explosions. And the only other evidence of this in the past is from meteor strikes and stuff like that hitting, hitting the earth. So this was one of the first things to point towards some crazy cata- uh, apocalyptic catastrophe in history that could have wiped out a civilization. Something else that actually helped point towards his hypothesis was the discovery of Go- Gobekli Tepe in Turkey. I don't totally know when this was found. I think it was about 10 years ago. And when this was dug up and discovered, they were able to actually find carbon dating back to almost 12,000 years ago. And at that point in time, when it came to archaeological digs and megalithic structures and these giant stone carvings and these chambers, nothing had been dated back that far at this point in the mainstream. And this was the first time that physical evidence pointed to something being built that far back in history. I mean, at the moment, real quick, guys, I just want to take your attention just for a minute, one minute. I just want to remind you, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and click that bell icon so you're notified when new videos come out. Be sure to leave a comment, like the video, check me out on all other platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and all others. But be sure to subscribe. Now let's get back into the podcast. Mainstream uh, archaeologists and historians say that the Sphinx and the pyramids are only 4,000 years old. That one might, the pyramids could be more likely, but it could be older. 
and especially the sphinx but it's hard to carbon date if something's as old as it is and it's made of stone because you need organic matter to carbon date so that's that's like one of the big challenges when it comes to these old megalithic structures and trying to find out its true date most archaeologists are making guesses and so it's it's one reason why his theory in general is so intriguing and when i first heard it to me it made so much sense to me it made a lot of sense because i have always thought especially seeing some of the work in peru and some of these giant pyramids these megalithic structures these blocks to me i always felt like there was some i mean obviously this was built but it's like how because it doesn't physically make sense for native americans natives in south america to to be able to create these structures by hand at least not um when we're thinking within the past couple thousand years it doesn't seem physically possible and it always seemed like that there, there had there was some missing piece there was some missing information and also to me it made sense that there could be something else because anatomically correct humans as we are today have been around for 300,000 years they were saying that basically civilization and humans haven't really done shit until about 20,000 years ago originally if that and to me I find that hard to believe because it's like you think that everything in history has been done in 20,000 years what about the extra 280,000 years before that what were what was going on there has to be something and two we can barely fill in the facts from something that was actually written about 500 years ago because either information was destroyed or history is written by the victor and it's hard to get true information on historical events so he just created this show on netflix called ancient apocalypse basically this tv show breaks down him traveling across the world pointing towards evidence that certain cultures and uh structures are pros very possibly older than they are going from indonesia to uh bahamas to watch oh shit to look at the Bim bimini road uh to mexico turkey uh where else did he go he went to he went to ohio um basically looking at all these things and realizing that there is a theme between these cultures and certain historical events there's there's information that for some reason is sprinkled together that doesn't necessarily add up for what we know pointing towards something else that was lost and one of the things that is very in interesting and makes a lot of sense is that every culture around the globe has a story of a great flood where human civilization had to restart and begin anew and he believes that there is possibly that this isn't just a story that there is actual human memory passed down i, mean, I guess it is a story but human it is it, it is an ancient human memory that was passed down from generation to generation that ended become ended up becoming the myths we know today not only that but he looks into the cultures and foundational stories to a bunch of different indigenous people from different cultures around the world most point to some person or being or god or giant showing up and teaching them the ways of civilization how to grow crops how to uh engineering how to build temples how to uh 
study the stars and astronomy. A lot of these cultures have something or someone that ends up teaching these hunter-gatherer societies how to become a civilization, giving them the the blueprints to become some of the civilizations we know today. And it could sound like myth. It's just, it's to me, it's fascinating because it's like when you have something like that happening all across the globe, doesn't matter where you are, and there's these, it's like when you go to a, in a movie and someone's trying to, like in a Deadpool when he's trying to figure out Francis, he's trying to find Francis and he has uh, like the, the, the big wall full of pictures and then strings and pins and then strings tied here like this is connected to this and this is connected to this imagine that with dots all around the world to all these societies all of them having floods and some founder uh uh, basically teacher that started the civilization it's like all these things tie all of these things tie together look on a map that was made in 1513 there is some form of continent or coastline on the southern edge of the globe. Doesn't make sense because at this point, no one has discovered it. The creator of this map in particular was in Istanbul, and he wrote that he used 20 older original maps as information and input along with new discoveries today to create this map his map was very interesting there's only one third of the map left the rest was lost to history not the islands we know today there's an actual larger island that is not there not only that but there is a southern continent of some sort and it doesn't make sense because it looks like south america goes down and then keeps continuing and for some reason, archaeologists today say that the oh, the only reason that's there was he ran out of room, so the map maker decided to change his direction for South America, and it's just a continuation of the continent. I'm not I'm not a scientist, but if I was making a map that wouldn't make sense, I would restart, either draw it smaller, or go get a bigger piece of paper. <laughs> and I know that's a very dumb explanation, but I mean that's kind of true. So. If you actually put a projection of what Antarctica would have looked like 12,000 years ago, the ice caps, both the southern and northern ice caps, would be a lot farther towards the equator than they are now. It's called the Ice Age. That's why. And if you would place that map over the renders of ancient Antarctica, the map basically perfectly aligns where the ice caps would have come into Argentina all the way up north into South America, and it would have looked like one continual coastline. And if that's the case, someone must have circumnavigated the globe over 12,000 years ago to map this out. And it's, it's crazy to think about. Now, you're probably wondering, Brett, what the, okay, so you're telling me all this information, but you're not explaining where this ancient civilization is, what the fuck happened, why doesn't more people know about this, whatever. I'm going to get to that right now. So, to begin with, Graham Hancock has been looked down upon in the archaeologist community for about 30 years. I didn't know who he is until recently. His original book came out in the 90s. But nobody's wanted to believe his shit because I feel like part of it is scientists, to an extent, are very arrogant in their beliefs. They don't want to be proven wrong. They've been teaching and studying so much that basically a discovery like this would rewrite the history books and change what we know of human history forever. I think that's one reason. So a lot of times certain studies, certain samplings, certain certain excavations, certain tests don't happen because they just don't want to deal with it on the hypothesis of the reason behind it might say that something's older than it is. They just don't want to fuck with it. 
which sucks because it takes a lot of information from the mass and trying to find out the truth. But the thing is, Earth rotates around the sun. We all know this, right? It goes, woo, sun. I can't go around my fist because there's arms. Sun, there we go. Sun, Earth. Goes in a circle, oval, sort of. It's, it's in a shape. Apparently, there is a ancient comet, would have been massive, that is broken up. And at one point, it has its own orbit that crosses ours twice a year. Around June and the end of October. And these basically point to, all the information points to, that there was some global catastrophe 12,500 years ago. And the cause from it was major flooding, thousand years of freezing, basically global warming compared to what it was then, and causing sea levels to rise over 400 feet. That's a lot. Basically creating the globe as we know it today. It looked a lot different back then. Basically, the theory is at this point that in that time period, 12,000 years ago, we came into the path, the orbit of this comet debris. We do it every year anyways. We have so many asteroids and meteorites and little stuff that end up close to us that we just don't know about or it's not talked about, or it already happened, and they're like, yeah, by the way, a week ago, we just had a meteor come closer to Earth than the moon, but we're good, no one knew, whatever, shit happens, and that at this time, the Earth was probably bombarded with hundreds of meteors, not all of them necessarily super big, not all of them necessarily hitting the Earth, but the main thing they do think is if there was one or two main ones, that they think the majority of them that actually collided with Earth because there's no evidence of anything 12,000 years ago, any impacts, is that they hit the ice ice caps, the northern ice caps in North America. So the ice caps took the blunt of the force, not actually leaving any geological impact damage. But between it hitting the ice packs and air bursts where the meteor basically blows up in the upper atmosphere from running into the air and having the pressure basically creating small neutron or neutron what basically all these being the equivalent to um hydrogen bombs and i mean imagine that a fuck ton of hydrogen bombs blowing up above these ice caps and around the world would have caused catastrophic damage but then because of these these bombardments, obviously it's going to be ridiculously hot. These stones are going to come in. They're going to fuck up these ice caps. They hit the ice caps. These ice caps are going to then melt and break up and cause massive flooding over in Washington on the eastern side of Washington State nowadays is where there's evidence of this happening. And then after that, within weeks, the global temperature dropping dramatically because of all the dust and debris that ends up in the atmosphere, causing a thousand years of extreme cooling until finally temperatures swing back in on itself almost a thousand years later, temperatures rise, the ice cap melts, or, uh, yeah, the ice caps melt farther back, basically ending the ice age and continuously flooding again and causing global ocean levels to rise 400 feet to where they are today basically leaving not much evidence of possible other human civilizations because probably the majority of them would have been built on coastlines just like we do the same thing today and 400 feet of water would make an, a, a, an extreme difference to where these houses could have been causing most of this ancient civilization to basically be wiped out and killed with some survivors then going around the world finding smaller uh, hunter-gatherer groups and places and teaching them the knowledge they know, which basically planted the seed for ancient civilizations and then what became today.